Welcome to the disassembly area of Road Scholars. We're in the restoration shop today. We're actually doing a follow-up video, quick rip video. Udo earlier, Udo Reisinger, who's part of our restoration team, he's our project manager. He did a basically disassembly process of how we take these cars apart, how do we catalog them, how do we give them parts numbers, and how we end them in our database, and then how we organize them in trailers. So we have a, a car that, and a model that's really near and dear to my heart. In 2007, we restored our first Porsche. It was a 1963 uh, 356B Carrera II Coupe, uh, Cabriolet, I'm sorry. Uh, a car that I'm really proud of. We, it was our first car we restored and took to Porsche Parade, National Porsche Parade, and we did very well with it. We scored a Zuffenhausen Award and uh, podiumed, and that was our first project. So I'm very fond of the Carrera IIs uh, for that reason let alone that it was Porsche's very first uh, supercar, if you will. It's the uh, piece de resistance of the 356 model line, uh, the final development of the two liter of the four cam engine, ultimately in the, the two liter engine. And the Cabriolet is being such a rare and more, the most expensive 356 ever made on a production side. And today we're here with chassis uh, 160, 790, that was a mouthful. Uh, this is a car that we helped a client buy in Monterey. And I get a, I get a lot of chuckles because Sports Car Market Letter, uh, obviously uh, a publication we all love and we love to watch their sayings and they said they overpaid for this car. We went to Monterey, we did the uh, pre-purchase inspection on this car. And this is my favorite car to restore and as the shop, if any of the guys were here right now, they would tell you, we love these kind of cars. So this is one of 30 made, so it's rare, one of 30 made C Carrera II Cabriolets, but it has two owners from brand new, and some famous, you know, it even helps that it has some prestige to the ownership. Uh, John Sturgis, who, of course, was the movie maker, he made uh, The Fight at the OK Corral, uh, uh, The Great Escape, just um, uh, some of the top movies, in my opinion, of that era, some of my favorite movies, uh, westerns and other things. He was the first owner of this car, and he kept it all the way to 1967. And uh, he sold it to Stephen Dean, of course, of Vosick Pollock fame. And that is where the car was auctioned off, off from his collection. 84,000 miles. And this car was delivered from the factory in champagne yellow uh, with a hard top. Uh, with some other rare options and a really great Cardex, and most importantly, it's actual original. We hear at nauseum about things being matching numbers, but this is actually has its original drivetrain. It does have its original uh, 587 slash one Carrera II engine and transmission, which is uh, rare on even the Carrera IIs, even though they were re robust cars compared to the roller bearing Carrera models. And uh, someone that I really miss dearly, his name was Jerry McCarthy. Uh, Jeff Adam, the famous 4Cam engine builder who we're friends with, he was his mentor. He was one of the first Porsche trained 4Cam mechanics in the United States. He always said to me, uh, great guy, I miss him dearly. He always said to me that the two liter uh, Carrera II was his favorite Porsche of all time. And this, again, if you think in context to like a 75 turbo, being Porsche's first 911 supercar. This is Porsche's first 356 supercar, doing zero to 100 in 27 seconds, a whopping 27 seconds. But that really doesn't tell the story of how much torque these engines have. They made 130 horsepower, and they're just incredible cars for all those reasons. I love them. So did our client overpay for this car? No, 84,000 miles. Every part, there's all the parts on this car are original. I'm going to show you some details. Trey's filming today. One of the things uh, about the Carrera 2 was the sound insulation. Porsche really wanted this to be the epitome of a grand touring car. And of course, that justified the $9,000 price in uh, 1964 and 65, this being one of the last 30 Carrera 2 
Cabriolet's made. But you can see in here, we're, we're doing the final disassembly. This is the original wiring harness, original fuse box, original fuses, every detail of the car, even the original primer down here. But you can see all the original sound deadening in here that makes these cars so special and quiet. Um, of course, everyone knows, if you're new to this or the people that are the efficient, uh, 356 aficionados know, every part opening panel to these cars was date stamped, or I should not say date stamped, but stamped with the last three digits of the VIN. So this has 790. And you hear that noise? As a restorer, you always want to beat on cars. When you hear that noise, that's a really great noise to hear. That means there's no... Uh, plastic in the car, no Bondo. This car hasn't been touched. It's been repainted, but if you, if you come around here, you'll see one of the things I love about original cars, it hasn't been messed with. This car hasn't been torn down five different times and done by amateurs or restoration shops that don't really have a professional pedigree. If you look in here, you can actually see how much sound deadening from the factory these cars came with. Uh, and this is all legitimate original sound deadening from 1964 and Porsche again trying to get the cabin quiet. But the, again, the doors are date stamped with 790. You can even see in the uh, tray walks around there. We have the original champagne yellow on the dash. Even at some point, the set, first owner or second owner had the dash painted black. But you can also see it in these uh, door sills as well, the champagne original yellow. And again, these are all special data points. And as Udo pointed out in his last video, this car is such a re treat to restore because we're not hunting down original parts. We have all the original parts that we can refurbish. And you can see these original details. We're not, although we're familiar with Carrera 2s, we've restored a number of them over the years. Uh, all the data points are here, and that's priceless in a restoration, whether you're an experienced shop or a shop just beginning its journey along the trade. Data point is everything. So this is original car. So I disagree with Sports Cars Market Letter analysis that our customer overpaid for the car, because what he paid on the front end, he's going to save on the back end. He's, we're not hunting down $150,000 worth of parts. Has its original gas heater. All these original things that add up to cost, serious cost analysis at the end. And the originality of the car, again, these noises, these doors are paper thin. Uh, one of the details I love about this car that it has, again, all the 356 geeks out there in the world know this. But there you go, these are the door A-pillar hinge plates. These are the actual original, these aren't reproduction. You know, these have been repainted. But there's the last digits of the VIN on those 790 on those hinge plates. And something else that not many people know about, we're sharing some 356 registry uh, talk list trade industry secrets here. But over here on the actual A pillar, on the frame itself, is the entire VIN stamped in by the factory into this. And something I always do when I go inspect a car somewhere around the world, I always ask for two days with the car because I literally try to take the whole car apart when you're sp about to spend a million dollars on something. And I want to take the car apart and see not only the original spot wells, but you want to see those kind of details. But again, you see this, and this is something that's really not well documented. It drives me nuts when I see restoration shops put new sound insulation into cars, new materials, because we like to preserve history, not change history. You see the coconut fibers, all the jute in here. Again, these are original details to keep these cars quiet. Uh, something cool that we noticed on this car, Carrera 2s have a really interesting, I mean, they went overboard on sound insulation. So the whole engine compartment is full of sound insulation, really crude material. Uh, we took the metal, uh, Sound insulation in the back here, it's kind of the, it goes right behind the engine, that's already out. But something that was really neat is this has 796 stamped in here. And then it has a zero underneath it. So obviously the factory, uh, Johan or Hans Gruber, whoever that day was having uh, a tough day. And you can see that they punched, they tried to punch over the nine, 
796 with a zero and saw that that wasn't very clear. Someone made a mistake and they added an extra zero on this frame. And again, you can feel, if you, after you've been around these cars for so long and worked on these cars so long, you can feel the fender wells, you can feel the beads, you can feel how thin the metal is. Meaning this car is a proper car. We're not gonna find a car that has three different collisions, rotted all the way up to the subframe that ends up being very expensive on these cars. And one of the things I'm really excited about during the disassembly process, oops, let me plug this back in. We have real time action here. It's Friday, it's been a long week. This is really cool. So here's the Hirschman antenna which is stock for this car. It's totally the correct unit, all the right things. But what we found under the oil lines, and this is something you found on early 9-11, of course these cars came on production towards the beginning of the 9-11, is this is a Hirschman power antenna unit. So power antenna uh, assembly that we found underneath the oil lines. And with a really big patch of the original champagne yellow, because I love finding original paint, as we all do. But other than just mixing uh, a Glasrec color code for champagne yellow, we're gonna do all our own uh, spray outs and try to match this original champagne yellow under this access panel where we found that power unit. And a really interesting power switch uh, that's factory that I've never seen on a three, uh, late 356, except for early 911s, uh, on the front wheel well. So anyways, we thought we would share these details. We hope that you find these uh, quick rips as interesting as our daily lives. This is our life. We literally live here oh, six days a week in the shop and uh, we're so honored to get to work on pieces of history and preserve them.